Well, John Sopel joins me, co-presenter of the Global Podcasts uh, and the news agents USA and the news agents. Uh, John, I-, I read your piece in The Independent this morning. Beyond awful is how you describe this for the Democrats. Look, Joe Biden had to do one thing, and that was to prove to the American people that age should not be a concern in the forthcoming election in November. I don't think anyone could say that he passed that test. It was at times awful, cringe-inducing, painful. I mean, there was kind of, you know, if it was a boxing match, you wanted the, the, the ref to interfere and say, OK, I'm stopping the fight, or his corner to throw in a towel. It was that bad. And I think that, you know, look, there were points that he landed. There were moments where... But he, television is an impressionistic medium. His campaign team were the ones who chose to have this early debate to prove that there was no issue. All they have proved is that there is an issue, that it's a huge issue, and that it's an issue that just has to be addressed if Biden is seriously going to go forward and be the representative of the Democratic Party at the forthcoming presidential election. Is it possible that they pushed for this very early debate uh, so that if they had to talk to Biden about going, they've got something to show him and to show Jill and to show other people who might want to stick with him? I don't think that the party works like that. It's like what the mistake we make in analysing American politics is to transplant what happens in British politics over to the American Mm. template. Mm. American politics is extremely different. There are no men in white suits who will determine, men in grey suits, sorry, who will determine whether Biden stays or goes. You might have been right the first time. You might have been right the first time. Well, men in white coats, maybe, (laughs) rather than grey suits. Yeah, Um, yeah, a good point. Well made. (laughs) Um, Look, I think that, you know, Joe Biden decides. Joe Biden decided. When I was last in Washington, you know, three or four months ago, I was at this very big dinner, fancy dinner, with an awful lot of people who are close to the Democratic Party who said there is no way Joe Biden is going to get on a debate stage with Donald Trump. That was the received wisdom. There is nothing to be gained. There is everything to lose. He went on the debate stage. Those people three or four months ago were right. There was nothing to be gained last night. There was everything to be lost. And the question now for the Democratic Party is what on earth do they do about it? now that Joe Biden has faltered so badly. And the American, you know, it is inconceivable to me, having spent eight years living there, that Biden's approval ratings are going to go up as a result of last night. They're going to go down. The doubts are going to magnify, intensify. And you have, you know, so in the CNN, you played the clips from CNN. After the debate, there was a woman called Kate Beddingfield in the studio. She was Biden's director of communications until a few months ago. She had been brought in by CNN to be a cheerleader for Joe Biden. She, she said be. it was awful. Yeah. She couldn't be. She couldn't say a good word about it. And it was the same on other network cha- cable channels who were covering the debate live, where the, the Democrat surrogate, if you like, just couldn't find a good word to say about the Biden performance. And if the men in grey suits don't exist, is it the pretty blonde lady in the dress and the blue jacket that can solve this, Jill Biden? Yes, Jill Biden is the one person who is empowered to say, Joe, enough Enough. is enough. However, the problem is that the First Lady, Jill Biden, likes being First Lady. She likes all that goes with it. She's enjoying, you know, the platform it gives to, you know, talk about education and all those other issues. And so the Bidens have always had this kind of feeling that they've been underestimated. There is a chip on their shoulder that people don't recognise just how good he is and he gets in a scrap and he wins. I just think something has changed after last night. And I think the Bidens will be under enormous pressure from the Democratic Party establishment that this cannot go on until November in an election where, you know, even before the debate started last night, the six states that will decide the outcome of the presidential election, Donald Trump already holds a lead. That lead is only going to grow after last night. So, you know, there is a question of timing. Of course, there's not a lot of time to put in a new candidate and whatever else. And, you know, it's a complicated process that would have to go because Joe Biden has the delegate votes to be technical about it. That means that he will be the Democratic nominee once their party convention happens in Chicago in August. But Joe Biden could gift them to somebody else if they could find that somebody else. If the Democratic Party got its act together, 
and staged a great piece of political theatricality, it could pull it off. Well, you've kind of led me to the question I was going to ask next, which is, if not Biden, then who? There are two names that I think would be up there. One is the governor of California, Gavin Newsom, who was there last night and was in the spin room trying to put the best possible gloss on it for um, uh, for Joe Biden and his performance. Um, and the other person is probably a woman that not many people have heard of called Gretchen Whitmer. She's the governor of Michigan. Michigan is one of those key six swing states that I was talking about. She has a very run very effective political campaigns in Michigan. <laughs> She is comes across extremely well on TV. She's a great organiser, operator. She's young. She forms cogent sentences. It would be an absolute game changer, in my opinion, were someone like her and someone to be on the ticket with her, say a black senator, I don't know, Raphael Warner from Georgia or whatever. You would have a ticket then where Trump's advantage goes because you have got somebody who is reasonable, and, yeah, and, calmly and, spoken, and, Trump, and all the rest of it. Trump and his team know Biden. They know how he might pivot. They know what his weaknesses are, what his strengths are. If a younger man or woman comes in and just shows a different game, they haven't got that game. They don't know the steps to that dance. Exactly, and I do, and I just think you just think of just think of what a game changer it would be. Say in the in the British election campaign. If after D-Day or whatever it happened to be, Rishi Sunak announced I'm standing down as uh, prime minister and, and there's going to be someone else in my place. I mean, maybe it wouldn't work so well in British politics. At the but moment, the, yeah. the, the, act, the act of changing leaders, you suddenly get a lot of attention. Who is this person? Donald Trump wants to have all the oxygen to himself. Mm. He wouldn't. There would suddenly be a focus on something else and someone else. And yeah, you're going to have to raise a lot of money to fight the campaign. Yeah, there are all sorts of kind of logistical problems ahead that would have to be overcome, but not impossible. The election is still four months away. And so I think there is time if the Democrats could do it. But you've got separate factions within the Democratic Party. You've got the very progressive wing. You've got the kind of more establishment wing. I don't know whether the Democratic Party would be able to pull it off. But were they not thinking about it? It would almost be political. Yeah, it would be political malpractice and negligence for them not to. Yeah, a word on Trump um, because it, it, again, he wants all the oxygen, but we haven't given him any in this conversation. Really, he he lied a lot, didn't he, last night? Oh, I mean, liar, liar, pants on fire. I mean, it was just non-stop. It was a it was a kind of fire hydrant, a full force of falsehoods. Invented statistics, polls that show that he's the most popular man that's ever walked the face of the earth, that Hamas wouldn't have dared to do what it did in Israel if he had been president. You know, counterfactuals that you just cannot prove or disprove. He was at it. And Joe Biden, I, I honestly thought, Sheila, one of the moments that, that, that clinched it for me about Biden's performance, we know he's always had a stammer. We know he's always been kind of, you know, he can be long winded. Mm. It was when he wasn't speaking and it was a split screen and you could see Trump talking and Biden is looking out into, into the, the middle distance, distance yeah. far away, his jaw slightly slack, his mouth open. And you thought, uh -uh, he's not there. Right. He's not completely there. Yeah. And that cognitive question, you know, we are talking about the leader of the most powerful country in the world. You do want to have someone who is in the White House and who is smart. in charge yeah, yeah. and is smart and has got their wits about them and his compass mentors. Now, Donald Trump lied and lied and lied. He didn't get caught out. He didn't get pulled up. He's impossible in some ways to debate. But Donald Trump was the same man as he was four years ago. The same could not be said of Joe Biden. Mm. Listen, before you go, we have our own dream ticket, don't we, on election night next week on July the 4th. Um, does that mean I'm going to be sitting near you? You're going to be sitting very near me, yes, yes, in that very hot studio in Millbank. Yeah. Just so people know, we're joining forces, the news agents and LBC, uh, Andrew Marr, you, Lewis Vickers, Natasha Clark, myself, we will be sharing. I, I said Lewis Vickers again, didn't I? Lewis Goodall. I've got those two. Lewis letters. Goodall. Lewis Goodall. Gonna, uh, Sorry, I'll... Lewis. We're listening. Do it all the time. Um, it, it'll be a great night because from my perspective, having done a lot of these over the years, what I'm going to blow smoke now. Uh, it's just so great to have that depth of political analysis around us on the night. So we will be picking your brains majorly, Mr. Sopel. 
Well, I look forward to it, Miss Fogarty. I mean, I think it's going to be a spectacular evening. It will be. It's going to be an exciting night. I, you know, look, people are saying, oh, well, the polls, there's no new points now. We could be seeing something epic, the likes of which, if the polls are broadly correct, we could be seeing something of an epic nature, of an upheaval in British politics that you have not seen for decades. I mean, decades. And it will be an extraordinary moment, and we will see how it unfolds. And I think that it, LBC... The news agents combo will be a great one to bring together and hopefully your listeners will feel kind of you know engaged by it all well i think there's a lot of crossover already between our listeners and yours and it's worth saying as well there is there has been um an urgent emergency news agents usa episode put up hasn't the folks those are interested yeah thanks very much john great to talk to you as ever john sopel co-presenter of those two global podcasts news agents and the news agents usa 